One of the nice things about this job is that I get to judge some very, very good contests, and this being the National Pork Cookout King Contest, as well as get some uh, interesting ideas to pass on to you. In this particular contest, there are 10 gentlemen from uh, different parts of the country that are participating, and Don Doherty is from South Dakota. That's correct, ma'am. And what are you cooking? I have a um, centerloin stuffed with prunes and apples and cooked in wine and cream sauce. Now, what do you serve with this? Uh, actually, the, the, the dinner itself is, uh, this is quite basic. It, it performs um, two things. It's, it's a delicious dinner and it's an attractive dinner. And I usually have a simple salad and uh, uh, maybe uh, old greens. Now, I doubt that there are ever any leftovers, but if there are, uh, are they good? Ma'am, I don't have any leftovers. I've got six kids. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Joe Stebley is from Wisconsin, and what are you cooking? I'm cooking a roast pork tenderloin with a honey buster sauce. It's honey, butter, and a little mustard. About how long does it take to cook this? Oh, about three hours. And do you have a problem with uh, slow or fast heat? Does it have to be uh, very steady? Uh, it should be steady. It should be steady. And uh, I selected a medium heat right now. What do you serve with it? Uh, usually baked potato and uh, probably uh, French-style uh, beans with butter and a uh, little of uh, these uh, prepared uh, onion rings. And I'm looking forward to the time that I get to taste it. And thank oh, you very much. You. And Mr. Nash. You have a variety of things here. Yes, I do. Uh, you are from Indiana, and could you describe the various things that you are preparing? Well, I'm cooking uh, pork chops, spare ribs, and these are um, little livers wrapped in uh, bacon. They're kind of a, uh, an hors d'oeuvre, you know. Yeah. How long does it take to uh, cook the uh, hors d'oeuvre? About as long as it does the pork chops. So this this gives something to nibble on, though, if you that's start right. Early. That's right. You put I, almost during at home. I put them on early and take them off, and they have something to chew on. Thank you, Mr. Nash from Indiana. David Aman is from uh, North Carolina, and those look like ham slices. That's correct. Center cut ham steaks. And how do you prepare them? Well, I have the center cut fresh ham steaks, cut one inch thick, and then I grill them for about 20 to 25 minutes over a rather hot fire. And then I make a, a, a sauce up while they're grilling in a saucepan over here. And the sauce consists of half a cup of muscadine wine, which is a, a wine grown in, in, uh, down in North Carolina. And it has a half cup of currant jelly with it and one tablespoonful of prepared mustard. And then I serve the uh, ham steaks with lettuce and crab apples. And two real good dishes that go with this are potato salad and string beans. Sounds delicious. How do you tell when the steaks are done? Well, just by appearance, really. Uh, after you watch them, they, they begin to brown on the outside, and you have to just check to see how they're coming along uh, with the cooking. Now, are these pre-cooked ham slices or not? No, this is fresh ham. Von Willer is from Missouri, and is this a pork roast? Yes, ma'am. Sure is. What, what have you done special to it? Well, the secret is the seasoning spices. Uh, we use a fennel seed mixed with our spices, which is an unusual spice that's used with pork roast. Normally, it's uh, used with the sausage line, but it makes a very different and very unusual and very delightful taste in this loin roast. Now, is this particularly good cold and sliced later? Yes, ma'am. You, uh, you can. The idea behind it is for time saving and the fact that you uh, pack all of the seasonings in the center of the roast before you put it on is you put it on and forget it you relax and enjoy it then later by using it either hot or cold and you can use it for a hot meal or also for a buffet style which I've set up here today. Larry Casey from Illinois is ready for us to of course taste and uh, as you open that up what uh, could you show us what do you have in there? This is a uh, seasoned bread uh, dressing uh, it's made out of uh, dried bread crumbs and uh, seasoning, uh, celery salt, onion salt, uh, some Larry seasoned salt, uh, bouillon, uh, chicken bouillon has the uh, water in it, 
put in fairly dry. Now, about how long does it take to cook? Uh, about 45 minutes. I let them cook just a little bit longer today, uh, being talking to everybody that come by. I let it cook just a little bit longer so I wouldn't have to watch them so close, but they'll cook in 45 minutes okay. Mm -hmm. John Nagel is from Wichita, Kansas, and uh, you're a bachelor, but you have something that all the homemakers, I think, that uh, have busy lives will be interested in. Right. I'm cooking a, hot, a Whopper burger today, and it's made from sausage, and I cook two patties of sausage. And then uh, in between it, I put uh, either cheese and onion. If you don't like onion, you can leave it out, but I prefer onion. It's very cheap, it's economical, and it's just so simple to make, and the kids really enjoy it. Uh, how long does it take to uh, uh, grill it? It takes about 15 to 20 minutes is all. I cook it over a very slow fire because this uh, sort of seals in the juiciness because pork has a tremendous flavor. And I use a barbecue sauce on the outside, and uh, this helps add a little bit of moisture to it and we certainly like our meat moist when we eat it. Now, I notice that you have them in the large one too because then actually if you have small children, you can quarter them down and they, they could uh, eat just exactly how much they want. Right. In fact, uh, you can feed a family of four with a pound and a half of sausage in this manner. Ed Farwell is from Illinois and you have a very nice uh, dressing here. Yes, I uh, make that out of the tenderloin, pork tenderloin. And I boil for the dressing. I take and I uh, cut the tenderloin up into small pieces and boil it. And then I use this broth to make my moisture for my dressing. And that's for the dressing on top of the butterfly pork chop. On top of them? Yes. Mm -hmm. I use it on top of them. I cook my uh, uh, pork chop first. And then after I have it cooked and I have the dressing already prepared just so I can put it on top of it, and then I set it on the stove with wrapped in aluminum foil. And this way, I finished cooking it that way. And I put a little dab of butter on the top of it to make it extra good. <laughs> right, now you have an also a special sauce here. Yes, barbecue sauce that we make up myself. What are some of the ingredients in that? Uh, some of the ingredients is uh, green pepper, onion, uh, mustard, French's mustard, uh, yellow mustard, and tomato paste, and vinegar, and a few others. <laughs> Thank you. We have oven meals for a long time, but Robert Wolf from Nebraska has prepared a grill meal, or I would call it a grill meal. Yes, I have uh, potatoes, and corn, uh, beets, onions, and pork chops. Now, what special do you have with the pork chops? Um, well, they're, uh, there's uh, honey and uh, thyme, dry mustard, and uh, fruit juice mixed together and uh, braced onto the pork chop. Now, how much difference was there in the time that you put on uh, the vegetables on to cook uh, compared to the chops? About 35 minutes. The, ch the chops were on 35 minutes before? No, no, after. after. The vegetables were on first. And you just wrapped them in the foil and sealed them? Yes. And now the bread? The bread, it's just uh, uh, garlic bread with some cheese on it and warmed up. You guys just took the chops off of the grill and, and I just had one taste. They're very good. Could you tell me the way you cook them, including the sauce? The sauce is a cranberry raisin sauce using cranberry fruit juice uh, cocktail and uh, the dried raisins. I put the, ch or the chops on the grill for 45 minutes on a low heat. Then I put the sauce on on just one side for the remaining 15, 20 minutes. This takes the salty taste out of these smoked pork chops and gives us the sweet taste of real good pork. It's so moist inside. That's part of the cookery and the quality of meat and uh, not just the sauce going all the way through. No, it is from cooking it very slow, which is a necessity on pork. Otherwise, you'll burn the outsides and the insides will be raw. And I might say, John, that you have a very, very nice display here because you have corn on the cobs and potatoes. Thank you very much. It was kind of hard to find corn this time of the year, but we found some. So. 